for English control. Um, yes, hell yeah. Um, super nice to see everyone. Um, my name is Theo. I work for the Danish Broadcasting Corporation in Denmark as a Norwegian, which is super fun. Uh, and I'm going to be talking about branding your types. So this is a TypeScript talk, uh, but it's very relevant for other programming languages as well. Um, so let's jump in, let's see if my timer goes, starts, there we are. So this talk started with my interest for programming languages. I find them super interesting. It's how us programmers interact with the computers and it's, it's true language, which is quite special. And I would argue that um, programming languages are created uh, by humans uh, and for humans. And when I write my code, it's by me and it's for another human. I'm trying to put my mental model into the code and hopefully someone else will have a look at it and put the same model into their heads. Um, we don't really care about all that runtime stuff today, so we're just gonna focus on um, yeah, semantics, which is a great word if you wanna sound smart. Um, semantics is just the meaning of things. So when we don't talk about the runtime, we talk about when we look at words in a language or tokens in programming languages, what does, what does it mean? What does it all mean? When I look at a string, um, how does that make me feel? Um, so we're starting with strings, which I feel like it's, it's the easiest type, right? That's the one of the first types that you learn, at least that's what I learned in uh, Python. And they're super easy. Like they're just characters stacked next to each other and they're readable. I learned to read at school and I, I assume most of you also read, super helpful when you're working with strings. And they're printable, like uh, I write my code, I put in some console logs, and when I run my code, the computer talks back, like it talks back to me, which is, it's okay. Um, and because it can, like it works for anything, right? That's at least when I started, I used it for everything. Anything, well, yeah. Uh, it can be my name, super great string, one of my favorites, probably top five strings in the world. My phone number, yeah, well it looks like a number, but uh, it is mostly just like an ID for calling someone, and we don't do like multiplication. It's weird, so yeah, that's a nice string as well. Uh, a boo Boolean, um, well it's not really a Boolean, is it? It's a still a string, but it looks like a Boolean. And in that sense, it can also be false, I guess. Um, a date, sweet, also a great string. Uh, hopefully it's valid, I'm not sure, but I hope so. Um, empty string, also, whew, don't forget about the empty string. That's one's great as well. Uh, that's my social security number. Um, <laughs> also a great string, I'm not sure if that's supposed to be there. Um, yeah, and also, yeah. Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson, the first book in the Swarmlet Archive. Great string, I recommend everyone to read that. It's quite long, but uh, also super great string. So when I write my functions, uh, and I see that it takes in a string, I guess I have to handle all these cases, because like the intention, is like I wanna write total functions. I want to handle any possible input within the types so of like a string, and I wanna do something uh, so we handle it like in a good way. Um, either return something or we just like throw an exception. But it doesn't just blow up, which might happen. That's a core branded strings comes in. Look, the, the strings are all aligned now suddenly. Super sweet. So in TypeScript, you can add like a compile time tag or brand that's mostly referred to as branded types to the string. So it's this small compile time thing that we add, some sort of structure, but not really. Um, and it works with, with any type, but we're gonna focus on the primitives that we don't usually do this sort of parsing with. Um, don't care too much, don't look too much into the syntax. It's sort of hacky, but in the end, we're creating a UID string here. So let's do an example instead. So we have my login function in my service, takes a username. String, sweet, password, string, sweet as well, I guess. And we do some logic on the username. We calculate the hash. I think that's good security 101. Hopefully this is safe. Uh, and we send it to the backend validation as well. Why not? 
So this handles all our logic. Um, yeah, and all those functions. Of course, they take in strings as well, so this type checks. Um, and then we get the username from somewhere, maybe a login or a form. Um, so this is my username and my pass pa my password. So don't steal that one. But uh, and we do our login function, right? So I write this. I tell TypeScript, hey, check this out. Uh, type check it, and it runs through. Looks good. I don't write any tests, so the tests they pass, and then I push it to production. Sweet, it works. And then I get these phone calls in the middle of the night. First of all, super annoying that they're bothering me while I'm sleeping, but also it's not working. I'm like shit. Well, it type checks, so why doesn't it work? Of course, the issue here, as most of you have probably seen, is that we've we swapped out the arguments. So the password is sent in as a username, and the username is sent in as a as a password. And that doesn't make any sense. Like our intention here is that all strings are not the same. We want to differentiate between them. And how do we do it? Oddly enough, branded types. So instead of passing strings, well, uh, in runtime, we actually do pass strings, but we're adding some structure. So we're sending in a username string and a password string. And this is our original code. And you might think that we have to like change this, like maybe unpack the username or unpack the password so we can actually run the code. Well, that's not the case. So it's still treated as a string. So we don't get like uh, type checking errors in this. So TypeScript is like a super pragmatic language on top of like a really weird language. Uh, so that's very convenient. Again, we have the username and my password again. Um, and then we do a type assertion to get the username and type assert it to get the password. And hell yeah, we get a compiler. Perfect, that's just what we wanted. And this is how we do it again. We have this weird syntax for, for creating the brands. Um, and then we're creating a username and a password. And you might say, you've, you've done nothing. Like you've just type assert. You've said to TypeScript, hey, this is a password and this is a username. You haven't done anything else. So that's my, my second point in this talk, which um, many of you might have heard of. It's the, the notion of parsing and not validating which is a great blog post by Alexis King that I recommend everyone to read. Um, so you need to parse your data in the outskirts of your code. So you can have your business logic to be pure and without all this dirty, dirty data from your backend API or whatever. Um, so what you do instead is like above the previous functions, you do either maybe like a pass password, takes in a string, it returns a password, we do some kind of logic, and then we do the type assertion again. Um, with the username, we can do a, a type assertion. Uh, no, sorry, type guard, that's the name. So the username is username syntax. N not everyone might be familiar with that. That's actually TypeScript syntax, not JavaScript. And we're just telling TypeScript, hey, if this function returns true, this is a valid username. If it returns false, it's not a username. And we can use it like this. Uh, parse password takes in a password, returns a parse password, and that's good. And in the second case, we're reusing the username. So the TypeScript compiler, super smart compiler, it knows that within this uh, if statement, it's now uh, a valid username. Um, for this, we're doing it manually, but you can also use a library like SAD, IOTS, or there's uh, tons of these libraries. I prefer to do it this the homegrown way. But this is like the whole world of branded types. I want to talk about a more realistic example on how in our code base, in the app that I'm working on, that because we haven't parsed our data that we're getting from all these APIs, it's polluting down through our code base uh, and just making it awful. Um, so this is our app. And no, I did not take this picture half past 12 yesterday. This was the first some other day. Don't think about that. Um, we have articles or article teasers because they go to an article. And we fetch it from an API or like a GraphQL backend that's run by a different team, but it's shared by many services. Um, and yeah, each teaser has a URL field. 
um, the images has like a URL and like this whole ginormous structure that we get from GraphQL is like there are URLs everywhere. And GraphQL is telling us it's an URL. In practice, it's a string. So now begs the question, is it a relative string or is it an absolute string? So we talked with the team, like just to be clear, is it or is it DRDK Sorry, there's a potato in my throat. Mm. Of course, it's both. Like, it can be both, which is super annoying. In some cases, it's relative. In some cases, it's absolute. Um, and, you know, legacy reasons, as always. There's reasons for this. This is not to, like, put on, like, we do this bad. This will happen to everyone. We have some external service, and it just doesn't align with what you want. Uh, yeah, that's just like the Norwegian saying, like, c'est la vie. <laughs> so in our code, before we did our uh, parsing in the edges and getting all that dirty data, as I call it, from our backend services, this is what we had. So maybe in the article, we had, oh, I can look here as well. Uh, <laughs> we have like a handle navigation function. We have uh, in the external link button that links to something else. Um, we have some uh, logic for adding a query parameter. We have a shareable link, whatever. And they all take in a string. It is like the biggest, worst, easiest, I don't know. It's, it's the weirdest type. Um, so we had to validate it every time. Uh, and that's what I mean by polluting. Because again, I want to handle everything correctly. Um, you know, either throw an error or maybe if the URL is empty in handle navigation, go to the front page. How do we solve this? Branded types. Thank you. Um, you can do with the article. You can figure out that it's a relative URL. That's what we've done. So we've like refined the data throughout the code base. Uh, and this way, we don't have to handle all these cases. The same with the external link button. Somewhere above it, we have uh, parsed the data. So it's now an absolute URL. And think of the tests, you know? writing tests for hand navigation or add query param, we don't have to consider all these cases that I mentioned earlier. And that is, of course, uh, meant that if your, your uh, parsing is uh, bulletproof or boom uh, that's very important. Um, or else this all just falls apart. Because there is a weird like handshake between TypeScript and JavaScript that you have to have in the back of your head. With the shareable link, uh, we still couldn't figure out if it's an uh, relative or an absolute URL, like it can be both. So then we just do check them both. Um, but the empty state, that's already been parsed out. So we removed all the dirty data and just stick with the, our, our main logic. So we handle most cases. Um, and also, if it's the first book of the Stormlight Archive, Way of Kings by Brandon Samson, you have to handle this as well. Uh, that's very nice to have. Okay, that's a lot. Let's see if we can refine it down to something worth taking away from this from this talk. We're getting type safety in something that people don't usually think of. We can make more type safe. Usually we have structures, but now we can have type safety on the primitives, like number and string. There's no runtime cost. This is just a TypeScript sort of hack, uh, and they're all gone uh, in the runtime. It still works as the underlying type. Super pragmatic, again using it in other functions, they still work as strings or numbers. Great for the environment, stops your polluting your code base. Um, so that's great. And again, it's all part of, this is just one tool of the whole parse, don't validate. Convert your dirty data into something that's better to work with, as you don't have to use all your time validating inputs and get some fresh air instead. Um, you can do it manually um, or with a library again. Uh, and also going back to the mantle model, it's easier to read the code when you see that it's like a relative URL. The mental model is more cemented in the code. So I can put it there and I can more easily think that it will be translated to someone else. And also from my head to the code and to the AI, which is unfortunately something we have to write our code for these days. Um, yeah, here's also one of my favorite other brands. Here we're branding numbers. So it could either be like seconds or milliseconds if you want to differentiate the thread between them, sorry. And also Celsius or 
euro. Again, these are numbers. Um, yeah, brand new types. Thank you.